the Boy Scout Troop 44 and Eric Town Scout Leader to our meeting tonight. Eric, where are you? Is this like civic duty for coming to observe uh, politics in action? We're working on our citizenship in the community merit badge to be followed up by citizenship in the nation and citizenship in the world. Those are all requirements to become an Eagle Scout. Terrific. Um, scouting guys, it's one of the best endeavors you'll find that it, throughout your whole life. My, both my boys, and I've said it many times before with Eagles, I was involved in scouting, and I know TV's heard it, and I tell the story a million times. I was a big sportsman and a hunter, and I can remember going on my first winter camp out where all you guys slept so nice and you were warm, and I froze. <laughs> because you guys knew more than I did, so. It's a great passage of time. Welcome. Anything from, yeah, the, from the board to the scouts that anyone would like to say? Glad to see you. Good luck and stay involved in your community for the rest of your life. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, are you here? Where's Eric? I was going to put him off a little later anyway because we do have a public hearing. Is there any citizens' concerns tonight? Anyone? Uh, then I guess we will head right into, you're going to be 715 for your um, public hearing, so we'll head into your business. Excuse me, please. Yes. I have a concern, but it's tied into Eric's report, so I just assume. Wait until Eric can. You can do that. Wait for Yeah, wait for it. Sure, thanks. Yes. Um, All right, new business, we have an appointment. Is uh, Diana Lord here? How are you? And Joanne Johnson. So. Uh, you know what, Tracy, should we have um, people walk over to the microphone a little? Are they going to be heard better there? Could we? Probably. Probably. So, Joanne, um, who's chair of uh, the Cultural Commission? The chair is not here. Michael Updike is the chair. I'm Can you kind of push this way a little bit towards that and kind of explain what we're doing? Sure. And I think we'd be glad to have um, you Diane, meet Diane. Stand next to Jen on that right side. Right next to Jen. We recorded the meeting yep. so we can hear you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm the treasurer of the Cultural Council, the Nervy Cultural Council. Kathy Muse is a member. Kathy, how are you? And we have uh, Michael Updike is our chair, but he's not able to be here. And we have, um, we have members that will be going off in June. And so we would like to continually put new members on so that we have a a, a nice number to work with. So Diana has moved to Byfield recently and is interested in the arts and has good uh, background in organizational skills and financial skills. So we thought we would uh, invite her to join the council um, right away. We will be having a meeting uh, next Tuesday night to uh, work on all the applications for this coming year. Thank you so much, Joanne. We have in our uh, packet a pretty good resume of you, Diana, and you've done quite a bit. So it's, it's really, I'm pleased you lived in the report. And if I read that right, you were involved in the uh, Firehouse Center? That's correct. Were you also involved in the Maritime Museum or just the Firehouse? No, just the Firehouse. Right. I knew the fellows over there, but I didn't have anything to do with their business. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, I think she come highly recommended. I'd entertain a motion unless, uh, motion. I want to a motion if we have any discussion afterwards, we can ask that. Motion to approve. Second. So, uh, any discussion? Do you have any questions for Diana? None? Um, Thank you for yes, volunteering. volunteering. Welcome. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, a request for property use. Um, Town of New Green Municipal Fire Department, as they have always done, I think, is Christmas tree lighting on the Upper Green. It's November 29th, 2015. It, it's a nice event. It's from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. I don't see anyone in the audience, Curtis or anyone. So, like I said, they have done it before. Uh, I would take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, second. Any discussion? I'll say again, the Christmas tree lighting is held on this green, the Upper Green. It's a, it's a nice event. It takes some time. You'll see a lot of people you know, and if you, if you can attend, it's, it's a nice event. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, can you just clarify, it starts at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? No. Or is that the set setting 1 up? 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. 
So it starts so at one o'clock in the afternoon. That's a one. That's what this says. Okay. It's not that. That's, that's right. not they're putting. If up. I remember right, it lasts a while. I, I think it starts at four. Okay. That's when they're that's putting, that's putting up the lights ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Because the kids sing and all that. It's an evening thing. So it doesn't start at one p.m. No, no, no. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. So it starts at four p.m. You got that. Alicia, you know that? Um, it starts at about starts 4 at, yeah, right about 4 o'clock. Dusk. They I'll put, the should I put dusk? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just put dusk. Well, I mean, maybe we can ask some of the guys to so okay. get back to you. Yep, thank you. <coughs> so before the night's out, we'll try to get back to you, Jen. Thank you. Donald Jarvis, uh, I see you here tonight. Donald, um, why don't you get up and explain a little bit of what you're going to do once I read Operation Warming Hearts uh, from Donald Jarvis and his address at the Toy Drive on the Upper Green in partnership with the Newbury Christmas Tree Lighting and Municipal Fire Department. It's going to be the same day, uh, November 29th, 2015, and you were smart enough to say time to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you get up and tell us a little bit about what they can do and where they All can right, leave so, stuff. All right, so I've been working on starting my own nonprofit to help um, community-related people who have kind of struggles. So I'm teaming up with the fire department, both Byfield and Newberry. Byfield will be in December. And I'm doing a toy drive to help families in our community who struggle and have a little difficulty during the holiday season. Um, I've also reached out to the Pettengill House to connect with families living in hotels down in Salisbury to connect with them. And the, all the school nurses at NES, Rally, Salisbury, Triton Middle School, and the high school to kind of get a nice reach of family who are struggling and provide toys to help these families have a good holiday. Is, there, any, is there anything specific you're looking for as far as types, well, I, age range? When I talked to a few groups, um, Pettengill and Turning Point, they said there's no general Pacific. Whatever we can get, they can utilize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is there a place you want to have things so dropped off? I've talked to, to I've talked to Ch uh, Chief Walker. We're going to be having a, one of the trucks come pull out by the tree, and we're going to toss all the toys in the truck, and then we're going to move the truck back to the firehouse for the spaghetti dinner and do the same thing. Okay, good. So it's pretty easy. Okay, is there a motion to accept? Motion to approve. Uh, any discussion? I guess we've had it. Well, I have another oh, question. Yeah. So who's going to, uh, Johnny, thank you for doing, for doing this, but with the, um, so h how are you, you're going to work with the school nurses, like how are you going to just distribute the need? So I've already talked to all the school nurses. Get, they have my phone number and my email. If they hear of a family that's in struggling or needs some assistance during the holiday, they're going to call me. I have a location through Turning Point where I'm storing all the toys I gather, mm -hmm. and then as it gets to the holiday, we're going to disperse them to Pettengill and Turning Point. Okay, so you're going to go through those agencies for now. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Yep. Can I just clarify? So the truck is, you want people to bring stuff to the Upper Green during the lot. Christmas tree Absolutely. lighting? Absolutely, yep. Is that what it, when it's going to happen? Yep. And then the, if they can't make those tree lighting, they'll have the same truck at the firehouse for the spaghetti dinner. I get it. Okay, thank you. Yep. And just so that everybody in the, in the neighborhood can know, there's also a choice for tots. The, the Marines do that, and there's a yep. drop-off station here as well. Question while this is on the table. Um, the, you said the Byfield? Uh, yes, we're doing theirs December 19th at the Art Center. Okay, great. Yep. All right, what time is that one, just for the record? That's being panned out. I'm not going to say any times in case something comes. <laughs> oh, right. oh, so that hasn't been so it be it'll be a nighttime night. probably. Evening of the is night. Is it going to be tied to an event, some type of an event? Yes, it will be. Okay. Yep. Thank Thanks. you for doing, Thanks doing for all. this. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, once again, uh, Donald Jarvis, a newly graves registration officer, as we know, request to use the upper green and it is on Saturday, December 12, 2015, 11 a.m. through Saturday, January 12, 2016, at 5 p.m. for a veteran wreath fundraiser slash ceremony wreath display. You want to explain a little bit about that too, Johnny, please? Yeah. Okay, so some of you may have heard this summer I spent the entire summer cleaning the cemetery behind me, the first parish burying ground. Um, we have veterans that have served from the Revolutionary War to World War II just in that cemetery alone. Across the town, it goes from Revolutionary War to the recent conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, to help prevent the overgrowth situation that was in the first parish burying ground, 
I am doing a fundraiser, um, which actually just ended. I'm selling wreaths that are going to be placed on veteran graves across the town between all five cemeteries. Each wreath sold generated $5 per wreath that came back to me to help maintain these graves. My original goal was, was 50. As of today, I have 146 wreaths, mm -hmm. which if you do the math, that's over $600 roughly, which will go towards helping uh, repair, ma maintain, and buy the medallions for the fl proper medallion flag holders for these graves. On December 12th, um, I'm getting seven ceremonial wreaths, one for each branch plus POWs and Merchant Marines. Um, through this organization, they ask I do a cemetery um, honoring the veterans, and then after, place the wreaths on the appropriate, the appropriate graves in town. So that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. So for the use of public property, can we have a motion? Motion. We have a second. second. Um, any discussion further? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We do have a public hearing. Um, Mr. Chairman, 330. Yes. The Christmas trees. 3.30. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, we do have a public hearing tonight, and the public hearing is at 7.15, so I would entertain a motion to open the public hearing. A motion to open the public hearing. Okay, hold a second. Second. Okay, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the motion, why don't we read this motion? Okay. And it'll tell everyone what the motion is. I move that... The selectman, on behalf of the town of Newbury, accept the conveyance of the street known as Livingston Lane, located. Not that one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one he pointed to. That's, 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 that's me. This that's one. In accordance with Chapter uh, 369, Acts of the 1982 Section 1, the Board of Selectmen of the town of Newbury will hold a public hearing on the determination of the percentage of the tax levy to be borne by each class of real property for fiscal year 2016. Hearing is to be held on Tuesday, November 24th, 2015 at 7.15 at Newbury Town Hall. You know what? Sorry, but they were more confused than you, so it's right. Bring it right off, huh? It's my fault. Uh, Michelle, do you want to get up and explain a little bit about what we're doing? And we do this every year, Tracy. Yes. But we do this every year. So, all right, thank you. Michelle, Michelle we're in support. I'm the principal assessor for the town of Newbury. Tonight we have with us the chairman of the board of assessors, Mr. Bart Kelly. Um, the purpose of the uh, classification hearing is for the board of selectmen to determine the allocation of the local property tax to be borne by the four classes of real property and class five, which is personal property for fiscal year 2016. In deciding the allocation, the selectmen must adopt a residential factor. The residential factor is used to determine the percentage of the tax levy that is applied to each class of real and personal property. The Board of Assessors applies these percentages to the individual property classes according to National Laws Chapter 40, Section 56. It is the responsibility of the assessors to provide the selectmen with relevant information and to discuss the fiscal effects of possible alternatives. Um, the total assessed values for fiscal year 2016, there are five different categories of uh, real estate. There's uh, class one, which is residential, class two, open space, class three, commercial, class four, industrial, class five, personal property. The usage codes are issued in accordance with the Department of Revenue Bureau of Local Assessment Guidelines. Some salient facts about fiscal year 2016, interim year adjustments. Per the Department of Revenue guidelines, the assessing cycle requires that all parcels in Newbury, exempt and taxable, be visited every seven years. Values are to be determined every year. The Department of Revenue recertifies values and audits the operations of the assessor's office every three years. Fiscal year 2014 was the triennial recertification year. Changes to valuation tables in the years in between recertification years are called interim years. Fiscal year 2016 was an interim year. Next year, fiscal uh, year 2017, will be our next 
revaluation or to our annual certification year. So we'll be in an audit next year. Um, the new growth due to construction in single family home sector <coughs> increased from last year. The commercial, industrial, and personal property new growth increased over last year due to an increase in personal property accounts and increase in value of our personal property utility companies. No change took place in um, new growth in the commercial area. Uh, below there's a breakdown of the, the um, new growth relevant to FY 2016. Um, you can take a look and see that the residential new growth was $129,478 out of $149,557 total. That represents 87% of new growth in residential and 13% in commercial, industrial, and personal property. So a total of 100%. And um, we do have a little bit of a history on the growth from 2016 going down to 2007, just for your reference, so you can see that history. Um, the total taxable value, the total value for fiscal year 2016 is $1,350,963,077, which is up about 1.05% from fiscal 2015. The overall residential and open space portion of that number is 95.65%. And commercial, industrial, and personal property is 4.35%. Um, fiscal year 2015 percentages were 95.37 and 4.63% respectively. Um, the tax levy. The levy limit is calculated as follows. We take the fiscal year 2015 levy limit. We add amended growth from form LA-13A, which we submit to the Department of Revenue every year. We add a 2.5% allowed increase. We add our new growth. And that gives us the total before the debt exclusion and override, which in this case is $14,147,834. The debt exclusion is $741,558. We also had an override of $125,000, and that is a maximum permitted levy of $15,014,392. Our property tax levy limit is $15,979,008, which the difference between those two numbers is the excess levy capacity, and that's $12,412.92. The tax rate is the levy, the tax levy divided by the town's taxable valuation. This is known as a uniform or single tax rate. Under this rate, each class of property pays a share of the tax levy equal to its share of the total town value. The tax rate is used in this report as fiscal year 2015 tax rate of $11.52 per thousand. FY16 tax rate is pending the Department of Revenue's approval. <coughs> the residential factor um, adopted by a community governs the percentage of the tax levy that is to be paid by the residential property owners. A residential factor of one will result, will result in the taxation of all property at the same rate, also known as a uniform tax rate, a single tax rate. However, the law allows a commercial, industrial, personal property tax rate for the town of Newbury to be as high as 50% above the uniform rate and residential open space to be as low as 65% of the uniform rate. History of differential tax rates in Newbury. Historically, Newbury has always maintained a single tax rate. Shifting the tax onto the commercial, industrial, and personal properties would create a tax burden for those properties, while the residential properties would only benefit from a small savings. Newbury's total taxable valuation is comprised of 95.65 residential and 4.35% commercial, industrial, personal property. Residential exemption, this one requires a vote. The Board of Selectmen may adopt an exemption of up to 20% to shift the residential class tax burden from lower assessed properties that are the principal residence of a taxpayer to a higher assessed property than properties that are not the principal residence of a taxpayer. A scenario of the shift is as follows. 
without an exemption, <coughs> FY16, a single, the average single family here in town is assessed at $414,204 times the tax rate of $11.52 per thousand gives us the yearly taxes of $4,722. With the 20% exemption, the assessed value after the exemption drops to $331,363. However, the tax rate jumps up to $14.40 per thousand, and actually the early taxes become $4,772, which is actually $50 higher than no exemption. Therefore, the Board of Assessors has consistently recommended that a residential exemption not be adopted. It places an unjustified additional burden to the other residences. And the last part is the classification, which the Board of Selectmen may shift the town's tax burden from the residential class to the commercial, industrial, and personal property, as long as the shift does not exceed the minimum residential factor. This means the burden cannot be shifted more than 50%. If you turn to page eight, um, there's a spreadsheet that I put together, and you can see at the top of the spreadsheet, you can see the overall classification and the value for each class of um, real estate. And you can see the tax shifting from 100% to 110%, 125, 150, and the taxes paid accordingly. Um, if you go to the second half of that spreadsheet, the bottom half, and you go towards the bottom, you can actually see the impact of the tax rate shifting. When you look at the average single family house, highlighted in red, $414,204 at a tax rate of $11.52. The taxes are $4,772. As the rate goes down by 10%, there's a saving per year of $22 to the average single family. When the rate goes down by 25%, the saving is $54 per year. And at a shift of 50%, there's a saving of $108 for the average single family per year. However, that burden has to be picked up by the commercial and industrial portion. And for the same value, a commercial property, for example, assessed at $414,204. When you're shifting the tax rate by 10%, the annual taxes go up $477 for that business. If you shift the rate by 125%, the taxes go up by almost $1,200. And at 50%, <coughs> the taxes, the tax burden goes up by $2,386 which is a huge burden on a commercial property. And um, in light of that information, the Board of Assessors is unanimous in its recommendation to retain a uniform tax rate for fiscal year 2016 with a residential factor of one, which would make it a single tax rate for the town of Newbury. Selectmen should sign the LA-5 if you approve and vote to allow authorization for Town Administrator Tracy Lake to sign the LA-5 on the Department of Revenue Gateway System on your behalf. Thank Any you so questions? much. So, no um, I, I have one just for clarity. In the class as personal property, what is that? In reference to just so businesses, the content of a business, so computers, file cabinets, any kind of ceiling fans, refrigerators, all the assets, business, all of the everything that can be removed from inside a business is considered personal property. Yeah, I just figured it was important to right. be verified. <laughs> then second home, just right. second home, as well. Yes. yes, okay, contents of a second home, not the second Towels home, itself. And right? The real property, first. yes. Right. The stuff that can be removed. Exactly. Got it. Thank you. Michelle, thank you so much. Thank it you. was a very, very detailed and very good uh, explanation and presentation, but thank you so much. Um,
Thank you. Would we have a, a motion from the board? I move to to sign the uh, LA five, five document. And, 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 retain, vote also, and I'm sorry, to yes, we vote on our recommendation right. separately. And, re and retain the residential factor of one. Yes. yes. And not adopt the twenty percent residential exemption. And, and all right, so start that again. I move that we sign the LA five. Adopt the residential factor. Residential, residential factor of one. And not accept. And not accept. I don't have any. Yes. Yes. Not accept the residential exemption. Residential, residential exemption. exemption. Right. So, do I have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? Okay. We're moving right along tonight. <laughs> you, you also have to vote. I would vote to authorize you to sign okay. on our behalf. So I will move that we authorize Grace Blaze to sign on our behalf. In regards to this matter, for all the things about it. Yes. So that being so crystal clear, do we have a, do, all those in favor? I'll set, wait a minute. We did have two separate votes. Two separate votes yeah. here? No? Do we need two separate phases? Well, it's just where yeah, I made two okay. That's right. All right, so the vote, uh, start again. Uh, motion to uh, have Tracy Blaze authorized to sign on our behalf on the issues here. All right, that'll, be the, that'll be the second one. All right. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Now you need a motion for the residential factor of one, one. not accepting the residential exemption. residential exemption and signing this form. No, okay. no we are. No. All right, so right. that took that. care of that. Yeah. So that second motion, as, as so stated. <laughs> as stated. Any second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you very much. Thank you for putting this together. Take it home. It's excellent nighttime. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rhythm. She read as follows. Uh, do we need to, to move to close the public hearing? The voice that to Yes. A motion, <laughs> motion to close the public hearing. Yeah. Have a second to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> okay. Um, thanks again, guys. We have a one-day liquor license. Did I skip anything? No. I don't For protection don't fire company, Eric's not here yet, right? Uh, protection fire company number two, Saturday, November 28th. Fireman's Hall through Morgan Ave. For a family party from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Everything All those in order? Everything is in order. Sure, look that way. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This one, um, Tracy, are you going to do a little bit of explaining on this to us, even though we've read it? This is that we need a vote to adopt the two investment policy statements. Yep. Wonderful. And those have probably been in place for a long time, right? Um, the actual written documents do not exist, so but creating we've been... Um, operating under these premises yep. since I've been here. Um, part of the community compact that we're going to be executing with the Lieutenant Governor uh -huh. um, asked that we put our policies um, as a best practice, that we put our policies all in writing. So these are the first two that we're going to be asking the board to adopt relative to investments and other post-employment benefits. So we've been operating this way, we're just formalizing the documents. By in writing. And partially because of some of the upcoming uh, issues. Now, question. Let's make a motion. Motion to uh, approve the documents for Do I have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? Alicia, do we have any questions? Um, uh, David, go ahead. I, I think this is also very good bedtime reading. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's how I feel about the investments. Um, how quickly do we need to get this done? I wasn't sure if Chuck or JR, it seems like a, a large thing to digest with only a portion of the board. I wasn't sure if it's pressing that we have this done sort of right away, or when we would review it if, if we do it now and there are questions. You can certainly it. adopt it at your next meeting. Um, we are meeting on the 8th, and the Lieutenant Governor is going to be here on the beginning date. It would be nice to say we've already it's completed it, but it's begun 
uh, implementation of some of the, the compact requirements? I mean, it may not be necessary to hold up. I don't know, I just thought. Well, can you talk a little bit about, about what best practices the plan is, is going to be implemented? Well, we're starting with the investment policy of the post-employment benefits. We're going to be looking at, from from finance perspective, that's where we're beginning all of our financial uh, best practices, utilization of reserves, free cash, stabilization, how we want to spend it, how much we want to have liquid. That's covered also in the um, investment policy. Our debt policies, we want to establish debt policies. Um, so when we read this on the front side about investment strategies and mm -hmm. you know, credit strategies and all those things, mm -hmm. they were pretty pretty strategic and pretty <coughs> And uh, are also all compliant with Massachusetts legal list. Yeah. Um, yeah. The post-benefit employment benefits so those would be all of the employees of the town? And, the and that would be what Triton's health plan too? We're creating our own policies. The district would create their I mean, policies relative they're, to they're, I mean, and, and Triton's open to funding their health plan. They, they fund their own retirement, right? As we, yes. And it's the health plan that even at Triton is unfunded, right? That's the unfunded liability. The, the benefits health. that, as a retired employee, we're responsible for, for paying. Right. So, just to be clear, and I want to make sure I understand this correctly, we're not changing anything the way we do anything. We're just putting it in writing. We've changed a lot over the last Five years. We're making a payment. For we're, this now. we're changing. Yeah. We've changed a lot of the way we operate relative to the finance department. Other um, functions of town government are going to be asked to look into best practices as well. Now we're just documenting, like, okay. um, putting them in writing and asking the board to adopt them as, okay. as official policies. First employment benefits. Is there any way anyone can ever catch up? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it was fully funded. Okay. Um, it's up to the board to eat the table if you would like. I don't care one way or the other, guys. Well, I would like to see it get signed tonight. Tonight. And, and I think it's rather than. Yeah, I think it's the night, too. I, just, I hadn't realized it was that complicated. Yeah, when I started reading into it, I was like, oh, so was I should have given myself a lot more time mm -hmm. to read all of this. Because we get more coming. Yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, I guess because no one's here to speak to it, they're not concerned about it. So. I don't think it's really going to affect anybody in town, really. Mm -hmm. I think it, it is what it is. It's not, nothing significant has changed from last year to this year, correct? No. And this is just a document that puts it in writing so that now when somebody says, what do you do, we can say, oh, there you go. Correct? So that as people leave, there'll be a policy yeah. document that yeah. they can understand and yeah. these are um, now requirements. And that's actually um, worth a lot because being on the planning board and things, when you're crafting certain bylaws and things, you try to leave them as open as little as possible to personal interpretation of people coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, I think, really good. So I would And other cities and towns do this, too. We can do this. Exactly. Do we want to look at the we just Discussion all those ready to vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, Eric isn't coming yet. Um, I'll just send him a text. Yeah. All right, we did. Did he, did he say anything? Did he, no, 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 no. Uh, he might not make it. He might be in traffic. And if he is, we'll discuss some of the, what's going on and uh, fill out probably a little bit of what he's going to do. All right, so old business. Before we go on to some of your bullets, I'm going to discuss something. The full board's not here, but I'm just going to discuss something with the full board for uh, the sake of um, information as old business. The Board of Health, I believe, tonight, and Tracy, didn't they talk about it the meeting before? I think tonight's meeting they talked yes. about it. The Board of Health has been talking about instituting a $300 fine for littering town-wide. 
and that's the Board of Health. And they've asked us, and we can wait till the full board's here, but they've asked us for a vote of confidence, or is there anything about that that we don't like? So maybe we'll make a um, motion for a vote of confidence for the Board of Health for the raising the, um, and then we can discuss it. Uh, so motion to uh, give the Board of Health a vote of confidence for the raise of the glittering fine from $100 to $300. All right, now we have a second in front of us. Now let's discuss it. Uh, Alicia? Did they provide any kind of a written, written judgment as to what, how they want the law to read? That will be forthcoming, and I think that will be part of uh, what they craft. And, and the good question is, at least for me, I'm not even positive what the uh, living fine is now in our town. $100, isn't it? That's what I recall. So, it means just for the audience and everyone out there, it's going to be a substantial lift. Um, I think it was not um, just focused on Palm Island. It's probably focused, uh, you know, maybe some of the intent came from some of the problems on Palm Island, but certainly I think it's fair that the whole town should be very conscious about littering. We have, you know, Route 1 that goes right through our town, and uh, 95 splits our town, and I mean, we've got a lot of different places where people could be littering, so I think it's uh, it's not a bad thing. Anything else that you guys are thinking about? Um, do you know if it's an up to, or is it a set fine? I think it's set, set. from what I heard. So Tracy so also heard the same thing. Set meaning if it's a bang. Yeah, so, so whether it's a couch or whether it's a cigarette butt or gum wrapper. Um, and you know, having not seen the law to the Lord or what they're proposing, but um, do you know if they, who would be an arbiter? You know, you get a speeding ticket, you can go to a judge and say, you know, my wife is having a baby and I feel like I don't usually speed, please give me a break here. Well, you know, give that. Good question. Should we take it? Oh, Steve, who's here? Michael. Littering is a bylaw violation, and disputes for bylaw violations go to the district court. They, whoever gets a ticket for littering can um, dispute it at the district court before the magistrate. Then who shows up for the town? The um, officer that wrote the ticket and the person that got it. So the police department is the one who enforces town bylaws. Yes, any other officer that enforces, that can enforce a littering bylaw as well, uh, if they issue that citation and it's contested, that the person who issued the citation will show up in court. Okay. So how is this, how is this, how does this relate to um, dog waste? Is that considered littering? Absolutely. I mean, that's a good question. Let's take that a little further. Please do. Is, <laughs> when the dog goes to the bathroom and the dog runs away and the owner doesn't see it, is that considered a three hundred dollar offense, or is it when the, that, oh, is it when that, the dog owner puts that, it in the I bag? Think that would be a violation the of the pooper scooper law. <laughs> and, but the problem is, a lot of people comply with the pooper scooper law and pick up the dog waste and they put it in the plastic bags and on their way off the beach or wherever they're walking the dog, just discard it on the ground in a pile. That's littering. So. Mm -hmm. So. There are two separate violations there. If you leave the, the waste alone and don't take care of the dog's waste, that's the pooper scooper law. Which, and is, which is what? I think it's that? 25, 50, 75, something like that. It may have gone up. I haven't seen the, uh, the citation in a while. Um, because most people carry the plastic bags and, and scoop. So mm -hmm. unfortunately for us, we uh, don't, don't get many violations of that. However, the littering, once it's in the bag, now you have the biohazard of the dog waste, along with the non-biodegradable plastic bag just littering wherever they're dumping it. So uh, we're having a real problem on Plum Island right now with the dogs on the beach and the people walking the dogs on the beach. But it's a year-round thing. So in, in any community has that. Mike, you're right up to speed. I guess that's why you're the chief, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you wouldn't have to know what other surrounding towns find on from. I don't like to research that. The only question that came up, <coughs> as this kind of was discussed, should we take and um, maybe make a motion for confidence in, in theory with what's going on and wait for a little bit more of what we hear? I don't want to take a vote of confidance until Chuck and JR are here. Right. 
so we can do that. But I mean, what we're doing is maybe <clears throat> what we're after is do we think that um, as the board of selectmen sitting here, do we think the fine's too much? Do we want to three hundred dollars. Yeah. Not if you don't litter, cost you nothing. Yeah. So I mean, what we're saying is, uh, we we would like to see more about the law itself for to us. Well, I, I mean, remember the board of health has the ability to do this. Right, and that's fine. Right, Tracy, as I understand, they have the ability right now not to even come and ask us. They yeah, can do which it. is fine. But I, I, I enforcement's an issue for me. I mean, you can make the fine a thousand dollars. But if nobody's there to enforce it, it's it, it's it's an issue. Uh, we try to have high visibility in Plum Island Center, where the bulk of the the uh, dog waste is ending up. And while the police officer is there, no one litters. <laughs> as soon as a police officer drives away, people litter. So I mean, unless you, you're there and you're catching them in the act, it's a, it's difficult. Um, you know, out on the highway, it's real easy to see when people throw things out of their car window, but people walking off the beach, they may keep it in their car until they drive out of sight of the police officer and then it goes out the window of their car. We've, we've seen that too. So, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. So how many of these, do you know how often you're sign, uh, citing people for litter currently? Every time we see it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I don't have those statistics with me. Like, I wasn't sure if you had a sense of it, like, you hand out a couple a month, a couple a week. Sometimes in the high days, a couple of years. Yeah, it, it depends. I mean, this time of year when the beach opens up to the dogs, we get an influx of it with, until people realize, hey, they're out there enforcing it, we'll take our, our dog waste with us. And then it slows down, but, you know, it, it, it all depends. It's, it depends on the volume of people on the beach and the volume yeah. of dogs. Um, yeah, I guess my, my biggest concern is about, you know, we've, if one of our Boy Scouts accidentally throws his gum wrapper, is he going to be before a judge with a three hundred dollar fine? The uh, the police officers have a lot of discretion for that, and uh, I don't think it goes to that extent. A lot of times, the police officer will just ask the person, "Hey, please pick that up, throw mm -hmm. it in the trash barrel, or bring it with you, um, depending upon where they are." And that ends it. I mean, okay. we're not so set in stone that we write everybody every everything we see. If people are cooperative with us, you know, our police officers, you, you exercise good discretion. Um, we could, uh, for the sake of discussion, and what Alicia said, wanting to hear from Chuck and JR, too, we could table this to the next uh, meeting. Because there's no rush to this one. No, meeting. and we're not, we're, not, we're not voting on this. Uh, I think the Board of Health was just seeking information as to how we felt mm -hmm. tonight. So that was just a request that Steve has something that they've been thinking about their meetings and asking if I poll the board. So, I mean, do, let's let's do this. We have three people here. Um, do we think that three hundred? Does anyone think that three hundred dollars is too much, and it should be two hundred dollars, or keep it at a hundred? I can't answer that question because I think, I mean, I think three hundred dollars is steep, but that's me, and I don't really litter. So I'd like to see what the surrounding communities are doing. I'd like to get a little more information, and you know, okay. I don't have enough information to answer to give you. An what are you doing? Um, it also seems pretty steep, but if it's, I kind of want to look at it in the context of solving some of the Center Island issues, which we're performing that we like to do, and. Uh, this isn't and just the Plum Island. This is for the whole town. I know, but it's it's a part. To me, this has come up as a part of that, mm -hmm. and I think it needs it needs to be viewed in that context. And you know, I. I think given the discretion the chief has spoken of with the enforcing officers, um, I don't think it's going to be used as a punitive measure against citizens. Um, and if we get it, get people to stop littering, then you could make the $1,000 fine if that was what it took. But, you know, so I guess, I, I think it's steep, but that may be what's Required to it may be what's people what's open needed. up their eyes and, and say it's not okay. I just don't. I just so. don't have enough information to make a decision. Yeah. For myself, I um, probably need to read the uh, littering bylaw a little more intensively. 
I think it might be, a, it could be better said as a stepped bylaw. If it's 150 now, maybe a second uh, wax would be a $300 hit. So, I mean, that's just food for thought. That's up. You know, that's up to the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen right. to set that. Meaning that, you know, you certainly, if a guy litters once and gets caught and happens to litter again, and he's figuring, I, you know, 100 bucks with the hell. Or, Heavy so. fines are a deterrent, but well, I think it was like when Greco said, if we're not out there to enforce yeah. it or we don't see it, it could be a million dollars. And, yeah. But, you know, the threat of a heavy fine is definitely a deterrent. So. Now, anyone from the audience, any one of the adults up front, or, and then the any of you guys? guys? We have the Boy Scouts? Let me get to it, Sorry. I would have got to it. <laughs> <laughs> now, would any of the people that are the Boy Scouts in the back like to speak? I'm just curious. Wouldn't it be cheaper to just let your dog go bathroom on the beach? Well, Mike can explain that because he's good at it. We have we have rules and regulations for that too. But go ahead, Mike. Um, the the dog waste on the beach. Nothing worse than walking on the beach with your bare feet and stepping in dog waste. So I, that, those laws have been in place for a long time, uh, and it's unsanitary. It's unhealthy. Uh, no, I know. I know. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I mean. Would it be easier if the dog went to the bathroom and the ocean washed it away? I don't know. I'm, I'm not the judge of that. I'm not the one I think her point is, why, will, why wouldn't you make them both the same steep fine yeah. so that one isn't inclined to do one over the other? Because what she's saying is, right. why pick it up if it's only 25 bucks to yeah. anything? Yeah. I, I have no objection to any of that. I, we only enforce yeah. the regulations. If the Board of Health wants to set all the regulations at that, I have zero complaints with that. I think. It, 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 Steep fine is a deterrent, and you know it does make sense if, we, if we're fining for throwing the litter away, but we're not. It's two hundred seventy-five dollars cheaper to just let the dog go on the beach and walk away from it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes what occurs is people are trying to vision for being able to make conditions acceptable. During the summer, there are actually no dogs on the beach, right, Mike? Yes. Are they on the beach after 5 o'clock? Can they walk out there on leashes after that? I can't remember. Uh, there are no dogs allowed at any time. At any summer. time on the beach. So supposedly that guides the beach against, you know, dogs with, with the kids and young, you know, eating their sandwiches and playing with dog poop at the same time. But some of those, the poop laws also spread to, you know, ball fields and other things. Yeah, that's where we're having the major So that's where the pooper scooper bylaws were maybe focused more at was the ball fields. Um, there's no easy answer. It's really hard even if you had a poopa scooper bylaw for a dog owner to always know what's going on too. It's just hard. Especially with no leash law no in leash town. Laws. The hard. dog runs 200 yards ahead of the it's owner. Hard. You don't know what the dog's doing until hard. you get up there and then, you know, how do you know that? So even though there's no leash law, you should, you do, the dog should be under your control at all times. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, I, uh, I, I, I have to take in the distinction between some of the poopa scoopa laws, especially to do with Palm Island, probably don't blend right into the $300 littering law that we're thinking about, or that the Board of Health is thinking about. And I think it's fair to say that we as a board should probably table it till we have a full board and we have enough questions that, but we have to also understand that the uh, Board of Health, you know, probably doesn't need us in this, but I'm certainly sure they're looking for our input, so. Yeah, so here's the town bylaw on, on disposal of waste, the Cooper Scooper law. First offense, $15, second offense, $25, and third offense, $50. Yeah, I knew it was small fines. Yeah. And I think part of that is certainly the police probably aren't totally running around in their dress shoes out on the beach looking for dogs <laughs> going in the bathroom. Um, and like I said, it's more focused for the ball fields. But that being said, I think we have enough and we spent enough time tonight. Can I have a motion to, to table this discussion? Do we have a full board, which is the next time? Motion to table to the next meeting. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Um, okay. Julie, you here tonight?
Yes. No? Yes? She's not. She's not. This seemed pretty simple, right? Wasn't it just the fact just they wanted to change the date? So as I read this, the fuel training studio from 75 Merrimack Street, New report that came, was it last meeting of the meeting before last two meeting, ago. two meetings ago, for their half marathon race would like a change of date and they'd probably like a vote from us. And that would be from Sunday, June 12, 2016 to May 16, 2016, from 9.15 a.m. to 1 p.m. So I would entertain a motion. Did any of our police or anyone else have a rifle? <coughs> any problem with that? Uh, Deputy Chief Lucy always deals with that on an annual basis, and it's never been an issue. So. Everything signed off, and it probably is All right, so that being said, um, motion to approve the change of date. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All I think it would be a lot better for the runners. Uh, oh, you mean because of heat? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's why they changed it, but I'd much rather run a half marathon in May than in June. Yeah, probably right. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Now, I guess this is asking for a vote tonight, but certainly we can discuss it. Is the change of venue for the 426-15 annual town meeting from Newbury Elementary School uh, gym to the Triton High School Auditorium? Yes. So, Did we're going to talk about that? Yeah. It is currently available for our, the date of our annual town meeting, April 26th. Holds 850 people. There's parking available for 420 cars. There is no room rental fee, but we do have to pay janitorial overtime in the amount of $30 per hour for each hour after 10 p.m. And we also would be responsible for paying for the technical support, which would be $30 an hour throughout the course of the meeting. Do we pay the janitorial thing now for the new elementary school? Um, I understand there was a fee assessed to us previously, but it has not been assessed to us this past year. Maybe it gets assessed when we use the auditorium because the chairs. Let, let's make a motion, then we'll discuss it. Do we have a motion? It's a motion to approve. Um, do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Now, can we we'll either bring up some of the discussion we had before about rates, or do you have anything else that you might interest you? Um, well, one of the things that came up, well, first off, I want to know how many the auditorium at Newbury Elementary holds and how that compares to the stage where we were at as well as far as just the straight comparison of numbers to numbers. Also, one of the things that came up during the coffee hour is that people felt like, at least two residents who came to the coffee hour, felt that uh, the FinCom selectmen and other folks who were up on stage were intimidating uh, by being raised above the populace during a meeting. So I just since we're discussing this, I thought I'd bring up that well, we perspective. We will be on stage the next, if we remove it, everybody's going to be on stage. And, and they felt that being a little higher than, we did there too, you guys both? Mm -hmm. so no, the, I didn't go to, the, well, the one the people were talking, no, Jerry, I must have done this on your own. I mean, Damon, when did you meet these people? The coffee hour, when this Saturday, that? past Saturday. Oh, so you had one? Mm -hmm. How many people came? Two? About 17. Oh, wow. good. All right, and their thoughts were because we're <laughs> elevated that we're really not like integrated on the same, you know, more accessible kind of when people walk up, they have yeah. to look up to us. You know what? Now, Tracy, is this date 426-15 the date of the annual town meeting when we're going to be voting for the police and fire? Yes. My thought is, since we're in the uh, level of discussion, I wouldn't change anything. It's further away for some people that might be on from Island, our old town, and we're looking probably for, I think, as much consistency as we've always had in town government for something as important as the, uh, the uh, police and town hall, which we have before us at that time, not police and fire, police and town hall. So that's a very important time. That's just my thought in the shape of discussion. And the annual town meeting is in the gymnasium where we're not on the stage. The um, annual one is in the square. 
that's the one, spring that's in the, the gymnasium. One, so that's where everyone likes us better. Anyway. And that's where we we pay a fee if it's assessed to us right. in the auditorium. There's no fee. You know something? Um, it's up to you guys. We can table it for a full board. Uh, Alicia, have you got anything else you're thinking? I mean, I don't know if I'm willing to give up the consistency after hearing what J.I. said, too, at least for this town meeting. I don't know if I want to disturb anything anyway. J.R. Damon. Damon, which I'm tied tonight, what Damon That's just okay. said. Right. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm doing the same thing. That's all right. It's a little further down. You're too far away. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, for me, that's what kind of bothers me on this day. And the thing we're trying to gain <coughs> is the fact that it's going to be more accessible for, for everyone in the audience. The thing we're trying to gain out of this is it's going to be much clearer, easier to televise for the people that are trying to watch town meeting at home. Sorry, sometimes committee. we know and we don't tell you guys out there. So. The media committee has asked um, if the town would consider moving the venue of the annual town meeting to the Triton Auditorium for acoustical reasons. Because when they provide the, everybody on the speakers and the microphone at Newby Elementary School, it's not really built for that. And he gets feedback and it doesn't present well on TV. So the media committee asked them, for the selectmen, if we would think about moving the venue to the auditorium where it's better filmed, better filmed, better acoustic, and be what, equipped and to what handle it. You might not have understood when Damon, Jay, when, when Damon had his coffee hour at Town Hall, there were quite a few residents that talked to him about a myriad of things, and at least two. And I almost can sense that my, that might be intimidating. Did, my, did not like when. The Finance Committee, Town Council, Town Administrator, and Board of Selectmen sat on an elevated uh, stage looking out into the auditorium, even though the auditorium was like this. When people had to come up to speak, they're always looking up. Now, the auditorium is a basketball. We're all on the same, same level, same floor. So, um, interesting. For me, like I said, the town of Newbury is always willing to accept change. They, they adapt very easily to change. So, so <laughs> I'm, not <ready. laughs> I'm, I'm not really ready to change anything for one of the most important town meetings we're going to probably have. So that's my thoughts. Anyway, do you guys want to pass on this or do you want I don't want to do anything without J.I. All right, so Chuck. then make a motion to table it. We'll do it. Motion to the table. Second. Uh, and we've had a lot of discussion, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, just got a text from Eric. Yeah. No, he's not going to make it. So, unfortunately, no, would have liked to bring up the regional dispatch, which keeps coming up, and, and the idea of doing one project at a time. And he also feels that the coffee hour was a very productive way to reach out to residents. Okay. So. Do you want to speak a little on what you're going to speak about? Uh, do you want me to start it off a little bit about the Municipal Building Committee and what they're doing so it makes it a little easier for you? Yes, please. All right. The Municipal Building Committee, and I'll probably pass some to Dana too because he was at the last one, has been charged by our board. And that's one of the things I'd like to make kind of very, very uh, known at this point. Our board made a vote for the municipal building, correct me if I'm wrong guys, to move in the direction of a new building for the police and town hall on this location. That's not That's perfectly right. accurate. What well, we asked them to do was to provide better information so that a new new building here could be compared with the previous plan A and with a new new building here that would have the ability to support an attached fire station in the future. Now, that's the motion we voted on? Yeah. And then it's my understanding that the Municipal Building Committee was going to come here with the original plan that we that has failed twice, mm -hmm. with the new new plan for the police and the fire, I mean the police and the and town, the town hall, hall here, and then a third option, which is a police in a, in a town hall with the uh, ability to, almost Lego, for lack of a better yeah. word, 
on the needs for the needs of the fire company. That was my understanding. All right. Yes. So, so the difference in, in what I said was the fact that the town hall and police could also. The only difference is going to be that we would hold it in comparison to what we were going to do with the police yeah. and fire. So they're they're getting the numbers. And the design. And the, the design, the point that they can design such as program design, oh, yeah. not design. <laughs> yeah. design. No. That's what's stopping up. To. <laughs> um, you mean what we already had anyway? Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Program layout yeah. and costs, yeah. okay. so that we can compare. The, the three different options that we have on this site um, and look at it so you know compare the police fire renovation town hall what does that assess out to for the residents what does new police new town hall assess out what's a new police new town hall with a essentially oversized support system for heat cooling Etc. How do those three options vet out economically so we can bring that through? And if Eric were here, he might fine tune those because I know you're going to get up and maybe speak about some things that you have and we'll entertain those with full faith. But I guess what I wanted the people in the audience to know and on television is that the Municipal Building Committee had a charge because we had a very long Saturday meeting and we moved from some of the plans we had before to those plans and we've started to hear about a lot more plans that might be better, might be worse and <coughs> our board charged the municipal building committee towards moving in those directions which makes it hard for them with, with what they have ahead of them to change that direction until at least the vote in the spring. So I wanted to kind of reaffirm that tonight, and I don't know if you want to add to that or do like, you have any problems with what I said. No, I, I essentially said at the last municipal building committee that for radical changes to the plan, people would have to bring that to us, and then we could bring it to the municipal building committee. Uh, because they are not currently looking at different sites. They're not looking at, you know, uh, re-envisions. Well, it's my understanding that that work's already been done. Why would they continue to look at things that they've already looked at? Well, I think what, what it is after going through a lot of things that this board made the decision that we kind of had to at least tie it down to the things you guys kind of corrected me upon, but it's at least those like three very closely tied in a bundle options that can be dealt with as a paradigm to go forward to solve a problem. Otherwise, they might as well not even meet. Yeah. So, uh, and at least to the vote, in the spring. Yes. We're aiming towards the vote in the spring. And the, the vote people... In the, spring. the project, right? Yes, the vote for the project. Um, and, you know, the idea, for instance, of regional dispatch keeps coming up. Uh, just build a police station somewhere. People bring that idea forward. You know, the police station is the, the burning, pressing need. Um, and they have dealt with has vetted that idea. The police chief has spoken regularly to that idea. Um, and while it has been resolved for many of us as to why we're not moving in that direction, we haven't always, that hasn't reached all of our residents. What corners of the town have been? There's one for it. <laughs> and one thing is that I think the board made the decision that as leaders we had to move forward in at least a relevant and pertinent and singular direction because not only is town hall very non-compliant but the police station obviously can't continue to go forward in such a way as we were going forward and we brought sewage to the area and it has a lot of pluses so that's the direction we went in now i just wanted to somewhat reaffirm that with, with the board in case there was anything that was different from what I felt 
we, we were talking about. You see, Alicia, you see anything different then? So, go ahead. Now, you have to introduce yourself because I'm not positive. Sure. Can you stand up over there? You, yeah. So, yeah. My name is Jim Moran. Um, and the first statement I wanted to make is I, I felt that the town had a very good plan early this year to brought the voters to develop the properties on Morgan Street. I think most everybody thought that was the best way to go. It would never been for us the voters. That vote effectively um, was, was a 1% difference. It was a 49 to 51 vote, very close, but it was voted down. A lot of feedback has been heard since that time that they didn't, the voters didn't feel they really understood what they were voting on. So my question is a few things. First, I'd like to think the board would keep open options, but that would still be on the table. Uh, even though the MPC might not be working on that right now, certainly I wouldn't want to think we'd throw away a good plan and say, let's keep that as an option. And that's uh, what we've done. And, it, and remember, they kind of corrected me. So that's still floating right. as a backdrop within their, their charge. That's right. Yeah. Uh, second, I wonder if you could update me as to what I think is really critical is the property that buy company two owns and where the board might be right now in securing that property. I don't think, uh, and I, I'll ask Damon because he was at the meeting and maybe Tracy has a little more information, but I don't think right now we have done since that Saturday, and I could be wrong, but since the Saturday when we heard so, I guess for lack of a better word, didactically from the folks in the audience that they did not want to build the fire station at this time that I don't know if there was, did we continue to pursue at a high level? We, we have an offer made to them, but they have not accepted it. Um, they, they did accept at one point in time, and it, we had an agreement that should the vote be affirmative, that they would agree to sell us their property. The vote for the police fire. For the police fire. Um, so obviously that option is not available. There was a subsequent offer made to them, um, but they have not accepted. And Jim, the reason that, and once again, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, it was two votes, and we felt that two votes was two votes. You know, how everyone was speaking, that the people have spoken, and that we'd be very arrogant to continue down that same path. And I mean, there were some people that thought maybe we should, because other communities bring up what municipal leaders sometimes think is uh, prudent visioning. They bring it up 10 times. I, I agree. I, I don't think the voters say no twice should be the end. Maybe they have to say no 10 times. Uh, in any case, what I've heard is it's still an option on the table, and we'll move ahead with that option. I think it's, it's just it's sitting by now. Right. So I, I, think what, I think what it is, is if Damon and Alicia are explaining to me right, it's still a backdrop into visioning what we put forward as a proposal. If, in fact, in the future that comes from the vote, it's really critical that the town secure the property. So the question would be if there's a better offer to them, is there a time frame establishes the way to respond? No. Not right at this time. That probably would want to get some closure. Well, go ahead. Um, I think. Let me qualify that saying. Obviously, we get back to doing it. So it's a, it's a little crazy time. To be. But I would certainly think time is always of the essence. And to have a little agenda, as important as this is, should have some point to it. Now, that being said, moving on to. Where, where we are right now with the NDC is um, this is the path we're taking. And the way I look at this, uh, this is a good plan. This will work. But the real question is, is it the best plan? Uh, I'm falling back onto what I consider a master plan for more than avenue. And 
Does the board really have a master plan for Morgan Avenue at the time meeting? Town officers, police department, and ultimately the fire department. Again, it comes to ownership of that land before you can do that plan. Uh, the way I see it is, we all know it's an important issue. First, we have a master plan. We figure out the cost of that master plan, and then we figure out the schedule, the duration, to implement that plan. And if that's done, and then presented to the townspeople, and everybody knows what the plan is, whether it effectively happens or not, that ultimately will be up to the town voters. And if you put a plan together and said, you want to do this in phases or stages, and phase one, phase one might be new town hall and police department right here where we're standing. Phase two, like a year or two later, might be renovations to the existing fire department. And phase three might be conversion of the rest of the property there to parking spaces, which you can call them everywhere. So um, I'm advocating a clear plan ahead. And right now, I understand what the direction to the selectmen is, okay? And we're ultimately going to have to take that and turn that to the voters clearly so they know what it is. But is it time to stop and say, hey, what really is in the best interest of the town, which I think you did earlier this year, and what would it take us to rethink this? To look forward. I will say this, like, like, like Alicia did say to you, the original plan, as I'm sure you knew, the original plan was everything you said. Um, that was police, town hall, and fire. If we could have cloned about 300 of you <laughs> back then, we'd be a hell of a lot further along. Well, he, if I'm not mistaken, the original report 16 months ago gave you two options, option one and option two. Option two was just what the president pursuing. Several months after that was initiated, then the fire company said, hey, listen, we'll sell our fire. At that point, it was a, a no-brainer. But the, and Tracy, though, the very original concept we once had at one point included everything, right? Or am I wrong? Wasn't there the original yeah. vision? Yeah. There was a police fire station with right. renovation to town hall. Right. It, it involved everything. So, so that must have been a prior to the CSF report? Yeah. yeah. Understanding that there's... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant what went to town meeting. No, no, the, no the original. That. We all thought about everything. Yeah. Yeah. We were all very highly invested in... So, so a lot of us really got very thoughtful about the fact that Newbury has limited water and really doesn't have sewer. And we felt we've made this not only a central location, and we felt as we met in the library in Byfield, that the synergy of town hall, police, and fire on one location was very relevant to town government. And we also thought that having water and sewer in one location was very valuable. I have to embrace that and agree, and I believe the board still agrees that's still the best interest. Frustration is the implementation of that with the voters. Um, <clears throat> I just, um, all I'd be doing now is repeating myself. I think I've presented clearly what we're, what's on my mind. Uh, well, it's my hope, it's my hope that when the Municipal Building Committee comes forward with a cost and a plan of what just the needs of the, this, the town hall and the police department, and we have something to compare it to, to the original plan, I'm hoping that'll shed more light on what is the best direction the town group should go. That's my um, Again, I, I think that's a good plan, but I think it's incomplete because the part of the equation that's missing is, is the fire. Yeah, but that's in the first the first plan. No, I... <laughs> and we're still looking at that. No, <laughs> we're, we're getting confused as to what, what's first, second, third. Yeah. And I think if you, the best way to do this 
in my mind is you use the CSS report, which is a fine document that was put out, it's published, anybody can read it, say this is the baseline to start from. And this is what we did. We've gone from that, we've gone to a full-blown development of Morgan Avenue, and now we're back to where we were a year ago at this time, with the development just for these and I two think, facilities. I think, and Tracy and the board, I think it was driven a lot by cost. And a lot of our thinking was <coughs> Flooded with the fact that the relationships of our fire department are very crystal clear, and it's always been very easy to understand some of those things. So I think it was cost and kind of getting through some of those ideologies that at least at the Saturday meeting with a lot of people here, the board, and, and I'm glad that my board told me a little different, that we were even smarter than I thought we were. We kind of moved towards trying to put something together that got as much done, with maybe a sewer hookup potentially, got as much done as possible for a lower price because it seemed that the fire station was a little bit of a sticking point and that the cost was too high for our town. So we took that very, very strong jaundice eye, and the five members of our board made that vote that day. It would appear that I don't think anything's changed since that CSS report. They needed some refinements. But that basically says, says with option two that you're moving ahead with, that it's a $7 million bill to do it versus an $11 million bill for the whole development. Uh, so this, Eric obviously has got more detail, and I'm sure things have changed a little. But I think that was a pretty detailed report, and I'm not so sure they're going to change. They had escalated those numbers either through December or the spring of 16. Um, there are some considerations with the new building. It is important you to understand elevation-wise, the town hall first floor would be different elevation than the police department first floor. It depends on the building. No, I'm just saying, so as you walk in from Gray to the new town hall, to get into the police department, you've got to get down five feet. So there's a difference in elevation between, so your elevator looks like it's going to have five stories. The basement, the first floor, the police department, the first floor, this building, the second floor, the police department, the second floor, this building. Um, in, in all fairness to Eric, I'm sure he probably has the answers to some of what I've written out. My, my thought was Eric is, will certainly spend some time with you. Too. Right. So. But I don't, I don't think it's important what the particular eyes on option two as much as what I consider the importance of keeping the option open to the future development on more than that. Yeah. Well, I think especially the two members on both sides and me articulated that pretty strenuously, and I think if that full board was here, they'd all feel the same way, wouldn't they? So. Definitely yeah. I, I feel pretty strongly. I've listened to, been attending many meetings, I've listened to people in the audience, and the common message that keeps coming up is that they never felt the voters really understood the vote that turned it down to begin with. And I think there's a lot of frustration, so that if you can refloat the vote, really put an effort into getting it to the general public so they understand better. And all the difference in the vote was 18 people. That was, yeah. A, yeah. That was the vote. Yeah, well, so you're really not 18, 18 and 19. But you know, you've had a very good presentation that's been helpful. What's pushing us along too is the fact that because it takes new breed, like I mentioned before, they accept change so easy and they're very quick to adapt. It's taken us so long to at least get to a point. Mike downstairs, they're, 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 Mike, can you speak to some of the changes, but they're just going to hopefully get us by for our the spring, right? Um, we've, been, we've done a lot of remediations uh, that the Department of Public Health has recommended. Uh, as far as air scrubbers downstairs, and uh, you know, obviously Tracy and the board, the board of health, we've done a tremendous amount of work hooking up to the 
water and sewers and getting us off the faulty septic. So that has helped. But there were 21 specific recommendations by Department of Public Health, and we're trying to institute all of them. And uh, a lot of them are uh, fairly easy fixes. Some of them are more intense, um, but we've tried. We're trying to implement all of them. Hopefully, the health situation downstairs will alleviate somewhat with the with the um, recommendations we've implemented. All of the space situation of functionality will remain the same, but at least it will be a more healthy environment for my officers. So. Well, we've got some people that aren't feeling well. It doesn't historically winter close things down even more because of snow and moisture and so, I mean. I'm hoping with the air exchangers that, uh, that we've installed that will alleviate that problem. So, uh, see what happens. So, as you can see, we're we're like pushed by not only putting something before the voters that at least they think is a good idea, and that was a pretty representative uh, meeting we had on Saturday, and we're also really getting caught by the time. Um, it's been many years that have gone by. To rush the judgment as you get to the finish line, I'm not so sure it's the best thing. And I really feel we'd be doing the town a disservice you know, I could get to the bottom and be able to tell the general public what's happening with the property. Either it's a go or it's a no-go. But to be in limbo and not know isn't good feedback they Right now it's a no-go, right? Yeah. Right now, right now, there isn't a lot of limbo, it's a no-go, but well, that's not what I understand from what I've heard. An office been made that hasn't been responded to. Which no, he's, he's Yes, fine. well hold it, hold it a second. Sorry to interrupt. You know, can we take 30 seconds so I can get my kids out? And oh, sure. Go but before we do that, can I just ask one question? Yeah. Who is this gentleman speaking? Is he uh, John Q. Public or is he yeah. represent somebody? Or? No, I'm John Q. Public. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Right, right guys. Town. So see, this is an opportunity for this gentleman who lives in town and cares about the outcome to come here and mm -hmm. hold these folks accountable and give his say and what he can do. And one thing is, guys, that's uh, that's one of the ways the town of Newbury runs the board of selections meetings. We're always very open for that type of interchange. Because you know what? So you're always able to learn something. Mm -hmm. so, thanks, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We have any questions? No. Nope. Any questions from the audience? Alicia, you have any questions? All right. That being said, John, you ready? I'm ready anytime you are. <laughs> we still got to wait now for Damon to come. <laughs> Fair enough. I can read a letter from. Uh, uh, Mr. Peabody. Um, we were approached by a gentleman earlier, John Higgins, who made a concept proposal to clean the water in the duck pond, basically. And he's thanking us in this communication. Thanks for including the proof of concept demonstration of Peapod technology tools to remove algae and excess nutrients from Newby's upper green. Excess nutrients, of course, are all the other various things that are cause for geese. I appreciate all the time and consideration given by the Board of Select and the Conservation Commission members. The cleanup demonstration will start in the spring of 2016 after ice out. We will put up a small sign to provide notice of planned work activities in the interim. We will likely access the pond to evaluate if depth and sediment types. They're going to do some cores with waiters and they're also going to go through the ice. So thank you to Jonathan B. Higgins and we'll go forward and see how well that does go. So now that you're back, we have to, and Martha isn't here tonight. So Ellen, she left you with a little information you can help us with, right? But as I understand this, we need to, we voted on this already? Yeah. And we just need to sign the acceptance plan for Livingston Lane, is there anything else beyond that? And the deed. Which and deed. The property over to the town. All right, so what would you be looking for for a motion to sign the acceptance plan that, and the deed? 
for a motion. So mm -hmm. motion, motion to sign the acceptance plan and the deed for Livingston Lane. Second. Uh, any discussion from my board? Hear, uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, so you get to sit and learn a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. We just did the letter. Yep, we did the letter. So, uh, review it. Did everyone read the uh, meeting minutes? I did. I did, but I can't vote on them. Oh, you weren't there? No. Then we'll table those for the next meeting. Yeah, so, uh, I take a motion to do that. I motion that we adjourn. I'm oh. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 All right, motion to, motion to table the meeting. All right. Thanksgiving, I got to do <laughs> you got to put the turkey in, right? <laughs> Do the cramping side. I, I motion that we table the minutes until the next the next. Second. Second. Uh, Discussion. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need a motion to sign the warrants? Yes. Yes. So moved. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any meeting updates? Yes. Well, you and I move us along pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I had about 18 people come to the the rescheduled coffee hour. Um, clearly, at least she's tired, so I may not go through everything that we <laughs> talked about. A bunch of the folks um, came with concerns about the town potential purchase of the uh, Cottage Lane property. Oh, yeah. Um, and so there was a, a a bunch of discussion about that. Um, they asked that we look at um, possibly giving the right of first refusal to the Green though. Um, I don't think that was something I would bring before the board to discuss. Um, I don't know that the Green Bell is interested, but I think you know at least having a correspondence with them or any other trustees, no. trustees of reservations that may be interested in acquiring and preserving the property is worth doing. Um, uh, was asked to, we had in the, the board unanimously in the past asked, sent a letter to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission about closing down the secret power plant. That issue was brought back before us again, or before me at this meeting. Um, Does anyone know if the, um, the management plan update the secret power plant was accepted by the NRC? I believe it was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Do you know? Jim, do you know? I don't know. All right. All right. Um, but he brought the previous letter that the board had sent, yeah. which had been signed and voted unanimously, um, and said that most of the ceramic communities have also asked for it. And there have been some studies done on concrete independently saying that it's really not in good shape. So he had a lot of information that he said he was going to pass along, but he didn't want to give up the whole coffee hour, which I very much appreciate. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the beach, Alba was there. Um, there was uh, an idea that we also talked a lot about how to try and re- bring the community back together, rather than having the ideas of the three separate communities. Um, no resolution, but it was talked about as something that's very important to get the sense of Newbury as a whole town, rather than the disparate little sections and parts that always vote their own interests. We did some uh, discussion of how town free cash actually works, just to educate people. Um, Good. Glad you did it. Now, when are you when are you doing December fifth? December fifth. December fifth for a lunch trip. Yep. One of the other things that was actually brought up about people really were pleased about the coffee hour. You need to come back to coffee. Um, <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. Oh, well, it's just an hour. It lasted about two and a half hours. That was really nice. It was lovely. And uh, but one of the thoughts that came up 
actually part of it was maybe we should do one over in the library, one over at Pitta Hall so that it's closer to people. Um, I don't know if we want to do that or not, but it was mentioned as an idea. Um, oh, yeah. And that's, yeah, Albert brought up the Australian battle game again. Kathy's voicemail is still the second to answering. Yeah, it is. And, uh, and then she, there was a complaint that in the run up to the last election, the, the Newbury Channel was just an inundation of um, public service announcements. About, about the, it was, she said it was just the fire station and then the police station. Fire station, police station. She was very upset about this. Huh. I don't have a TV that's connected or anything, so I couldn't speak to it, but uh, it, I can see it being, uh, if you're trying to watch meetings or things like that, the other pieces of the programming that we're supposed to provide. So that about wraps up the yeah. Now one thing we've got to be careful on when we have these, and it's just a thought, it's just an aside. That, and it's real easy to speak for the board. No, yeah, you can't speak for the board. Okay. I didn't. But I, I know, you, and, but I mean, I have to remind myself, you know, when it's my, my turn, so you really got to try to remember that. Too. Okay, I think Damon had a good point. I can bring this all to the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but right. I viewed it as trying to get people to give me their input rather than answering questions or defending decisions that we've made or anything like that. Just get people to talk to us so that we know what's on people's minds, and then you know, we can discuss it in this public forum. Um, but I didn't, you know, in, in part keeping with what you said about being careful not to speak for the board, you know, I did try to alleviate people's concerns that the boards in town are arrogant or speaking down to them, um, and explain that, you know, I think the reason that happens is we attend a lot of meetings, we've gone over a lot of these questions over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, Again, okay. ad infinitum, um, and so that may be where some of that perception of arrogance comes from. Because I know, you know, I work with all these people on these boards a lot, and I know that none of them are, are trying to speak down to people. So I didn't, in that one instance, I was like, I don't think that's an accurate perception of the selectmen, the FinCon, the building committee. You know, I don't think anyone's trying to speak down to the townspeople. I think it's much the opposite, but. <clears throat> I think you're right, it's something we have to be. I mean, careful. one thing is we've made, you know, this board, it's all you guys together and everything else, but we have made this as open as possible to work in concert and as much with free information flow with the finance committee, the building committee, and on and on, as capital planning. We've, we've really tried to, you know, have a free flow of information, probably more than at any other time, because I, I I've been a selectman for a while, so. Anything else? I think that, that covers it. Um, so. Executive session and then Alicia. Motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 thanks <laughs> again. You know, we, we did this backwards today. Don't That's you I, I promised that I wasn't going to forget you. You can't adjourn now. No, well, I'll wait. We have Very a town administrator's report. Thanks, Grace. Okay. Very briefly, um, I received a nice letter of thanks from Brian Forget and um, Superintendent Farmer, uh, thanking the folks from the Newbury Fire Department for responding for the second time in as many months um, to the elementary school and assisting them and allowing allowing them to keep the building open uh, during a water break. Um, so they were very appreciative, appreciative of all the help that they provided. Um, so I just wanted to pass that on to you. Why is that water break? I can't answer that question. Okay. That's a very important question. <laughs> uh, the Council on Aging Director, Marty Joe, um, and I met with uh, four potential candidates for the director's position. We evaluated all their um, qualifications and hope to be making an offer by the end of this week so that we could have someone work 
with Marty for a couple of weeks um, That'd be good. during the transition. Uh, we received notification today from Maya that we received a $5,000 grant to purchase a trench box for the DPW uh, department. They have been operating without one, which is pretty shocking. Um, Save the cadence when someone's down in a trench. It's a big oh, metal box that sits in. Oh, it's kind of an important piece. It's very important said, yeah, piece. It is. So that will be coming soon. The police department was also awarded a 911 incentive grant in the amount of $19,000 for their dispatch communication center software, and it allows them to pay for wages for personnel as well. So that's more great news. That's good. Uh, the sewer project is complete. The connections well. have been made, and it is functioning properly. So. <laughs> that's good. Yep. Uh, the initial appropriation for that project was $500,000. Um, we did not spend the entire appropriation. There's a balance of over 154000 that will revert back to free cash. So that's good news as well. Um, and the trailers, the countdown on the trailers, we all know is seven months. Just want to keep that on your radar because it will be a very quick closure of those trailers. So we've got to start putting a plan in place very soon. Um, Doing drawings as a whole earlier. Yes. We're having we're we're engaged in many discussions about possible solutions, but um, and one thing is July first. first. <laughs> July first, the trailers have to go. They will be removed. And it's hard for anyone to actually realize that, but I guess the trailers have to go. That means it's the beginning of the outlay of expenses by having to find places to rent to put people in. We're going to have to rent, now, even if we come up with a decision. My understanding was that if we, at the April meeting, approve the construction of a new building, mm -hmm. the trailers at that point could stay because we've made progress. That's no longer the case? That is not the case. If we had received approval at the past April town meeting, we were, we were possibly going to you know, educate, I believe it was a six month extension. Yeah, they failed. Months. So that's already, that's okay. that's off the table. I hadn't understood that. Um, the, the, the other thing that we have to be concerned about is there's no appropriation for office rental space, which can be quite expensive. So um, I would be petitioning Finance Committee for Emergency Reserve Fund Transfers. Um, we also have to go out to a competitive bid process to lease the property. So it's a, it, it's a lengthy process, not to mention, you know, moving all the IT and purchasing Just additional photocopiers and phone systems I, and everything. So for people that don't know, we have some IT in that for the trailer, right? Yes, we do. So. Yes, we do. And just bring to your attention again, the records are deteriorating. The, the, the town, town records. Down. The most valuable town records are in here in a climate control <coughs> fault, but there are many other permanent town records that have already we've already lost, and there are others that we are losing. So, um, you know, I just want you to be aware of these issues. If Continue to be aware of them. I know you're already aware. We of have them. to fix this problem. If a private can they be stored privately? Like if a resident said, I'm, I have a, a room which my you know, kid no longer uses, you know, is that plausible? Just to get them out so that it stops rotting until we can find a place for them? I don't know the answer to that question. I've, okay. I've, I've never researched that, but I certainly can. I mean, just mm -hmm. rather than risk being sued for losing documents. Well, they're town documents. I know. They really don't belong in a private home. Absolutely, but we don't have any spot to put them right No, what we can rent. We do own the inspectional services trailer. We do own that. Mm -hmm. So what once they're out, like to buy that? if we climate, if we kept that climate controlled and could at least move them over there. I mean, right now, if you go over there with the cold mm -hmm. evenings and the warm days and you open it, it's raining. Yeah. Uh. Um, now we did box up a lot of them in hard plastic containers, but there are many file cabinets and, and additional things that just don't have that type of protection. So. And I bet the mice are having a feel good. I do not know the answer to that question. Shoot, don't ask for one. No, I'm gonna. 
Um, so, I'm not quite sure, I, I have a couple questions, but I'm not quite sure um, how, is it possible for the Board of Selectmen to have a working, set working group meeting so that we can, I want to have you and the chief and the other chief and the heads of the department. Only if two of you are in attendance. Otherwise you have to post a... Otherwise it's a meeting. Okay. Yep. To try to hammer out some of these solutions. Sure. What do you think? I'm just throwing it out there. Need space to start yeah. looking at the space problem. Well, yeah. we need, we can't, that, listen, these trailers are gone. And if we wait until it's already Thanksgiving, Christmas, the first of the year, we need to have a plan because it's not going to be quick to do, to do this. To move into the trailers we have, took three months? Took more yeah. than three months. We're going to get crack a lacking on this. <laughs> and I would like to see the police department completely moved out of that facility and rent someplace else for them because even though the sewer has still been addressed, it's still moldy and it's still gross down there. So I have I have full support of moving the police department completely out of the basement of this building, rent them space someplace else. We can talk about options um, as we're discussing them I can bring alternatives to the board. So that's the way I feel. But I don't I don't think time is of the essence. I really believe that. I do too. So and the other question I had was as far as the superintendent of school search goes, does this has the time you ever been asked to put somebody on that search committee? I have not been asked to date. Okay. I have never received the request. I've already had some people Personally, maybe want to know what was going on. I can follow up with Brian. Because yeah. I don't know. I've been, because I have a daughter at the high school, I still get emails. And I don't know exactly what the position the three towns are going to have on this, but I know it's going to be something. Okay. I have a feeling. I have an inkling it's going to be something. Okay. I can find out. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is um, Christmas and the New Year's holiday fall on a weekend. So December 24th and December 31st will be the observed holidays. So town hall will be closed on both of those days. Is that also a Friday? Is it Christmas fall on Friday? Is it Friday? Mm -hmm. They could, they, they, I don't know how they're Friday. They don't work on Friday, so they get a Christmas holiday. Yeah. Friday. Isn't it Friday, isn't it? Friday. Mm -hmm. So we'll be observing it on Thursday. The 24th. Thursday is Yeah. Okay. Are you done, Trace? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone's cut, Trace. I tried to make it short. It was very short. <laughs> we still love you on this, Trace. Okay. Oh, I need to because it wasn't done properly, we need to read the motion that... Is that what you, like, made big yellow for me to do? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. And take a formal vote. I move that the selectmen on behalf of the town of Newbury accept the conveyance of the street known as Livingston Lane, located in Newbury, Essex County, Massachusetts, as shown on the plan entitled Street Acceptance Plan Livingston Lane, Newbury, Mass, dated February 20th, 2015, prepared by Hazen Engineering Inc., as authorized by vote under Article 15 of Newbury Special Town Meeting, held on October 20, 2015, and signed the Street Acceptance Plan. I second that motion. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I motion to adjourn. Can I have do a second, please? Do we have a second? <laughs> 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 I am. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye.